We follow students in Birmingham and Manchester. I want to listen to your chest. Juggling academic study. Nothing's going in. With home life. <laughs> and work on the wards. You're never going to learn how to be a nurse until you're out there doing the nursing job. This time. Which arm are we doing? Blood. I'm not going to lie, I did feel a bit woozy. Blisters. I hope it's not like a yellowy, cheesy kind of substance. <laughs> and goodbyes. You look after yourself, all right. As our nurses-to-be step up to the challenge of 21st century nursing. In Salford Royal's Dermatology Unit, 29-year-old Kelly is at the very beginning of her journey towards becoming a nurse. Hi, gents. Would you like some uh, vegetable soup for your lunch? Kelly's had a few false starts in life, but this time she's determined to make it. I feel like this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm not wasting it this time. And I don't think it's ever too late. If you want to follow a dream, I, don't, I think you should always follow your dream. As well as the usual challenges for new students, Kelly has an additional hurdle to overcome. I'm a bit of a novice, but practice makes perfect, so thank you for letting me have a go at this on you. She has dyspraxia, a condition that can affect coordination and learning. With dyspraxia, it makes you really clumsy. So sometimes I'll look at things and say it wrong, or I'll read things and interpret it wrong. I'm just going to make sure that I'm careful and make sure that I'm extra vigilant of what I'm doing. I am. I do remember how to do it. Mm -hmm. I've just not done it. it On today's shift, she's running through the complicated aseptic non-touch technique with mentor Mel. Should I wipe that down first then? What are you going to do first? What does the person say for you to do first? Wash my hands. Yeah. Oh, not there. See. I have done a few of these cleaning downs, which is Good practice, because you get used to doing it. Right. So say you've gone to the patient, and the patient's yeah. in his bed. You open this out, but you don't touch it. No, I'm wrong. I thought you I'll drop it on the thing, and then, oh, apron and gloves. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting all panicky thinking, oh, God, what am I doing wrong? What stresses me out is not, no, not doing it perfect. I can't, it winds me up. Okay. More worried about getting things right, me. It's trying to remember every single step and a lot of important steps to protect the patient. They aren't in here already. You don't want them to get worse. So, we do do this now, don't we? Mm -hmm. Drop it onto the... But we don't touch it, because it's, it's sterilised. Mm -hmm. We can touch the outer layer, but we can't touch the inner layer. So the blue area is fine to touch. So take the... The dirty gloves off that have touched everything that's not sterilised. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No, we need to open them up, don't we? Oh. Because you've got non-sterile gloves so, on, you need to take a dirty wound right. off. Just rip it quick. All right. It's like that area. If you've never done it before, you think, oh, no, I can't touch anything. It all has to be sterile and da 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 Ah, 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 ah. What are you going to do with that? You're not going to use your clean hands to clean my wound? No. With. Open, take the plaster, put it on. Can you use both hands now? Right, so put the plaster on and then done. Job done. Uh, God, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perfect. In Birmingham, 50 year old Dani is taking a second shot at becoming a nurse. Should I start um, um, peeling the dressings yeah, first? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then obviously you have to change, change the gloves. Dressing. Yeah, will do. 30 years ago, her nursing studies were cut short by illness. Only now is she picking up on her youthful ambitions, albeit with grown-up nerves. It's a very tough thing to do, walk, walk into what effectively is a new job, new set of people, you know, that, that feeling when you've got it here, you know what I mean? It's just sort of like, you know, you try not to feel really sick. Morning. Danie's working a 12 and a half hour shift on the acute medical unit in Good Hope Hospital. Call it a long day, <laughs> which it is. <laughs> She is under the scrutiny of her mentor, Becky. The ward does have a quite a fast turnaround of patients, um, so it can be quite challenging. Mm. As a second year, Dani is practising the aseptic non-touch technique on a real patient. Oh, yeah, I'll give it a pull. Pick it up with my left? Yeah. And right's my dirty hand? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's been a bit dense there. 
Yeah. Well, once you've done it once, if Dana did this again tomorrow, she'd know yes, how to do it. But because all wounds are different, it does take a while to get used to them. Good fun for you. It's all good practice. <laughs> Nursing's not all about careful technique. On any ward, there can be other, more emotional challenges. Sid's been admitted with a range of problems, all stemming from his final stage prostate cancer. You seem a lot better today, Sid. You seem yeah, much well, brighter I'm today, don't you? Once I get up and I'll be out for a while. Yeah. That's lovely, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they don't ever do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, when Sid came on the ward, I wasn't quite sure of his sense of humour. As we treated him each day, we got to know him. Do you want some deodorant on? Do I smell that bad? <laughs> No. No, you really are overdoing it. I'm well, not very good at hair. You've got a beard. <laughs> you, you like that. <laughs> Sid has one simple ambition to go home. For someone who's got so much going on, he was so positive and determined what, what he wanted. Have you made a decision yet? About going home? Yeah. I think they need to see you first. Can you your arms are more swollen than they were. Yeah, I've arranged a meal. You've arranged a meal? Yeah. Okay. What, for tonight? For tomorrow. I'm joking. <laughs> Sid realised initially, you know, he had to come in hospital and, you know, had to go through. But I think once he knew, really, there was not a lot they could do for the, you know, swollen abdomen and that, his, his, main, his main goal was then to get, to get out. There's no argument now. I'm going to get out mm. today. It's time to get out. We're going to die in here. We'll do our best. We've got to go. Was there much more they could do for him? No. So for him, it's the social aspects, being near family and, you know, not being in a hospital, being in his own environment, being with his, you know, his friends and family, that becomes maybe more important than the medical treatment. What are you thinking? Hey, got to get me out today. <laughs> got to get you out. Yeah, look at all this. Got to be. I know, but no, I shouldn't. You know, if I was normal, you'd um, you just. You are normal. No, you're normal. <laughs> no, I'm not. And uh, time's running out. Look at all these different things. Yeah. Yeah. That's another day. Tomorrow. Yeah. Well. I'm... And tomorrow might be the last. Who knows? So I've got to get out. Yeah, I understand that. I understand yeah. your urgency. I'm going. You're going. You've made a decision, yeah. have you? Okay. Oh yes. Well, it's your decision at the end of the day. Yeah. You've got that right to yeah. make that decision, Thank Sid. You. I feel naked without it. Hello for lipstick. <laughs> in Salford, new first year Kelsey is just starting her training in mental health. When you think of a nurse, you think of the perfect Florence Nightingale figure. And I think just to look at me, you wouldn't think I was a nurse with dark hair and tattoos and red lipstick. But I know that I will make a good nurse because it's who you are, not what you look like or what music you listen to, really, that defines you. Kelsey's first placement is in mental health treatment support at Birchill Hospital in Greater Manchester. Here, she has to dispense with her face paint. Smartly dressed, hair up, no lipstick, no heavy eyeliner. I do feel a little bit lost, to be honest with you. As well as no makeup, there's another obstacle to overcome. I'm quite nervous because I've heard there's needles involved and I'm not the best when it comes to needles. I'm going to have to man up a bit and brave it out. All of today's patients require a blood test to monitor their treatment. Which arm are we doing, Patrick? This one, this time. That one. There's no escape for Kelsey. I'm not going to lie, I did feel a bit woozy when I saw the blood coming out. I tried to put on this brave face, but I did feel like I was just going to throw up. See you next month, Patrick. We take blood off each, each every patient that comes through the door. They get, we're asking for a blood sample. I wasn't expecting that much blood to be taken. I didn't know every patient that walked through the door would be having a blood test. I really don't want to tell Jill that I'm scared of needles because having a student nurse walk in and be like, oh, by the way, I'm scared of needles in the clinic where you do this all the time. She's going to be, what? I don't want to tell her. I don't want to tell her. I'll probably tell her when I'm going home.
Jill is blissfully unaware of her students' fears. It doesn't seem to have phased her at all. She's, she's done really well with that. She's not had any phobias to the needles or, or to, to blood coming out of her patient's arms or anything like that. She's been great with that. Their next patient, Michael, has stopped taking his medication and needs reassessing. Kelsey has been asked to lead the questioning. It's her first opportunity to put eight weeks of theory into practice. She can do it because I'm going to prompt her. <laughs> I'm going to be okay with asking questions. Fine. And I'll do the writing, all right? Okay. Michael, yeah. this is Kelsey. She's just a student, so yeah. she's she's learning how, what we do here at uh, Treatment <laughs> Support. So how has your mental health been recently? Is that? Uh, I stopped taking my medication. Right. So it, uh, it sent me back into psychosis again. Are you experiencing any side effects since starting back yeah, on? I do. Going to sleep can be difficult. I also seems to slaver uh, a lot with the, with the medication that, that I'm on. I wasn't expecting to be this hands-on, really. I was expecting it to be more just taking a back seat of it all and just watching. Right, Kelsey. Michael can have his medication now. Right, OK, because he's got... But a today's been really, really good getting really involved. In Salford, at the Royals Dermatology Unit, Squeamish Kelly has been working on steadying her nerve. I imagine it, let's just tell you how I imagine it. They're called blisters with water in. <laughs> I hope it's not like a yellowy, cheesy kind of substance. <laughs> I just don't know what to expect. Her last patient today has blisters all over his body. Caused by an autoimmune disease, they need daily attention. OK, so we start there, we can see there's no blisters on that area. Right. There's no blisters on that area. So as we move to the knees, you can see the blisters there. Yeah. Fernando's treatment means Kelly and her mentor Lucy lancing the blisters. Right. All right, don't be nervous, it's fine. You can't do it wrong. You just need to try and catch the fluid. Well, okay, that one's flattened out. Yeah, that's right, perfect. As I'm doing it, I thought, oh, it's quite fun, this. <laughs> I got a bit excited. I thought, yes, bang. <laughs> All right, so you want to pop those that side, yeah. and I'll pop these this side. And he's got every confidence in us, haven't you, Fernando? <laughs> Beautiful. Five stars. Five stars. Oh, thanks, Fernando. Oh. I expected them to be a bit worse, but it's not that bad, actually. The Dermavate cream and popping the blisters has really made a big difference. So hopefully it'll just get better now. Yeah. So thank you for that, Fernando. Thank you, Fernando. Finished. 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 Well done. Oh, thank you, Fernando. And they're gone. They're gone. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> at the end of the week or at the end of your shift when you've worked all week and you're dead tired and sometimes when you just get acknowledged by a patient or a staff member and they say, You've worked really well. It gives you a little warm feeling in your heart. And that, that is what I'm here for. As Kelly's very first placement draws to a close, it's time for mentor Lucy to tell her how she's got on. So when you first came on the ward, you was nervous. I didn't know very much. I've never worked on a clinical environment before. So now I feel like you're quite used to it. I feel a bit like part of the team. Two weeks is just an insight so, into the yeah, ward. Yeah. OK, so you've learnt the ward. So if someone asks you to get something, you're quite competent on knowing where to get things. Run the pharmacy run, yeah. knowing the outline of the hospital. I think you've done everything. And I think you should be really proud of yourself. Yeah. OK, so well thank done. you. Oh, thank you. OK. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I think I've come a long way. I feel more educated, more, less naive. I feel like I know what it's more about. It's been invaluable. Fellow first year Kelsey had a rocky road through school before coming to mental health nursing. A lot of people didn't think I'd get very far. A bit of a dropout, and then having a baby quite young. So to come back and prove to them I have set out to do what I wanted to do all those years ago made me quite happy, really. There's one person in particular Kelly wants to prove herself to. I wanted my mum to be proud of me more than anything because I, I felt like I'd let her down. Without my mum, I would not be where I am now. I wouldn't be sat here, I wouldn't be at university. See you later, See you later. See ya. I appreciate her so much, probably more than she'll ever know how much I'm grateful for her, really. 
Making sure she gets the most out of the placement is mentor Ashley. Safeguarding children, so this will have quite a lot of information in because that is an issue. Today they are making community visits. There's a bonus for lipstick loving Kelsey. Working in the community, it's absolutely fine to be casual and to wear my hair down and have my lipstick. Kelsey and Ashley are visiting a patient who is struggling with his condition. It's something Kelsey can sympathise with, having experienced her own mental health issues. Hi Evan, are you okay to come in? Thank you. I myself have actually had postnatal depression and that was an extremely horrible time in my life because you're supposed to be celebrating this wonderful new baby that you've got and I just felt completely detached from not only my son, my family, I didn't want to do anything, I just wanted to sit around in my pyjamas all day. I wouldn't talk to anyone, wouldn't go out. And it was a horrible time. Kelsey has also had to deal with her mum's severe depression. So I know, like, first hand, what, how it can not only impact on yourself, but your entire family around you. Because seeing someone you, you love so much to just be someone else, not the person they was anyway. Uh, it's, it's really hard. Where do you want us to sit? Over there. Over here. Evan has been suffering from hallucinations and hearing voices. So, when did I see you last? Was it about a week ago? A week and a half ago. How, how are things? I'm not feeling tired and, like, mm. I know I should be feeling tired. Yeah. Um, so I think because I'm not feeling tired, I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? And then when I start getting into that thought process, I think that's when the voices get worse because mm. I'm getting myself all worked, worked up. up. Yeah. Kelsey's chosen one of the more specialised areas of nursing and she relishes the challenge. With mental health nursing, you never know what you're going to come up against. That's something that kind of excites me. At the same time, it scares me to death. What I'll do is I'll book you in to see our consultant psychiatrist and then you can discuss the concerns that you have about sleep and, and the medication, but yeah, really fine. focus on your daily routine yeah. and see, see if it naturally improves yeah. by looking at it yourself. Yeah, so thank you for that, Evan. I've seen how hard it can be and how bad it can be without the correct support. It makes me want to be like a super nurse. I think this is going to be a massive, massive journey, and I don't think it's going to end any time soon. Second year Dani is halfway through her eight-week stint on the acute medical unit. She's looking after Sid, who is terminally ill and desperate to go home. He told me that morning, I'm going, I don't care what the doctors say, I've made up my mind, so nothing's going to, I'm up for the fight. That was his words to me before the doctors round. Obviously, the doctors must have got that sense from him anyway, because I think they just said, fine, you can go home, Sid. And he said to me, I thought I was going to have to fight, he goes, but I didn't. He just set about making arrangements for a, a dinner he was going to have, a meal with all his friends and relatives. An ambulance crew is taking Sid home. As long as I don't start singing, Sid, that's when you've got to yeah, worry. It was good that he'd got control about what he wanted, you know what I mean? And that um, I've still got control to say where I want to be. And uh, you just knew it was the right decision for Sid. If you could show Sid's face, that was the best nursing you could have done, was managing to get him off the ward. He was so happy about this meal on Saturday. It, it was just brilliant because he was, he was just in such a good time, you know just a good place at that time. That feels to me like you've done the job. Don't worry, we don't drop anybody on a Tuesday. It's a bit of a worry when it's a Wednesday though, Sid. Oh my God. It's fine. It's The last one we dropped. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, got rid of you finally, haven't we? <laughs> right, is that it? No, nothing else to go? Nothing else. Oh, you. You're all right then, Sid. Yeah, yeah, OK, you, right. you take care of yourself. And you enjoy yourself, all right? I, yeah, I will. I know you will. I know you will. You look after yourself, all right? Yes. Thank you very take much. Take care. Sid was able to enjoy the meal he planned for family and friends. 
not everybody's going to be cured when they leave hospital. Unfortunately, that, that's the nature of the work, isn't it? You know, some people aren't going to, aren't going to be uh, mended as it is. He died three weeks later. But if you look at the other stuff, that probably means as much to them. And that's, that's, that's what I think it meant to Sid. Next time, big responsibility. I feel like it's my job to look after him now. Hidden emotion. Because I'm trying to be calm and not show that if I'm a bit anxious, I'm just trying to hide it. And basic care. I think it's always good to clean someone up and make them feel like they're a human.